I know some of you are depressed and I'm not talking about Soros or the Black Lives Matter or how the Antichrist is taking over the world and these vaccines coming out with 666 and they get viral videos of 2 million views, 3 million views. I know you're so disappointed and you onliners, yeah, I'm preaching at you onliners. I know this is not clicky for you that when it comes to a prayer video, we don't see it go viral. All righty. I'm preaching here. All right, let's go to Romans 8. Romans 8. When it comes to prayer, it comes in very mightily because it goes by the Godhead. When you come before the throne of the Lord in prayer, do you realize that you're using the entire Godhead when you pray? You come to the entire Godhead of God the Father, and then you go through God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. You might say, how so, Pastor? How so? Well, when you're praying, you're, direct, you're addressing it to the Father. Address is to the Father. That's why we say Heavenly Father. So, a few times you might hear, dear Jesus, but actually that's inaccurate. You're actually addressing to the Father. So when you pray, you got to realize it's addressed to the Father. It's not to the Son. Sometimes, but we're not nitpicky either. If somebody says, dear Jesus, we'll let it slide here and there. Sometimes I do that a few times. But you got to realize that uh, if you're going to be more doctrinally accurate, you got to address it to the Father, okay? So the Father is the address to. The name that you close it is in the Son. And the one who carries the channel is the Holy Spirit. So you got to realize that the whole entire Trinity over here, the Godhead, is involved through this power of prayer. Now, within this realm of territory where you got the Holy Spirit, the Father, and the Son involved, we want this to reach the realm to reach you. We want it to reach you. Where are you at, huh? You here or your way out here? So, where are you at in your prayer life? That's the question. You can get closer, you know. So where are you? Romans chapter 8. Notice how the entire Godhead is involved at verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray, what we should pray for as we ought. So there are times that we don't know how, uh, what... Uh, specifically what we should pray for during our infirmities, right? During infirmities, it's a time of confusion, isn't it? It's a time of confusion. You don't know what's going on, so the Holy Spirit helps you. So there's the channel. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with, with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit. Wait, wait a minute. So then uh, we saw the Holy Spirit at verse 26... But verse 27, he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit. That can't be the Holy Spirit. We know who that is. That is Jesus Christ then. That is Jesus Christ. Because he maketh intercession for the saints. So that's Jesus Christ making intercession for us. Ain't that a blessing? According to the what? Will of God. There's the Father. According to his will. So then the Holy Spirit is the one who becomes the channel Christ, he becomes the ultimate intercessor where he carries on what the Holy Spirit delivers to him and then addresses it to the Father. So you get, the ch so you get what's going on over here? I'll tell you basically what's going on over here. The Holy Spirit is inside you, right? Now, shouldn't the Holy Spirit be like this in your life? What is this called? The filling of the Spirit. Now, if you're filled with the Spirit, then what's going to happen is, there he goes. He's right here, starting from you. And then because of what Christ did, based on the finished work of Calvary, bless God. Because of the finished work at the cross, the Lord Jesus Christ, he becomes that ultimate intercessor on our behalf. So basically, it goes like this. The gap between you and the Father was so great, but because of that precious cross of Christ, Amen. 
it bridged from earth to heaven. There are beautiful songs about that, about the cross being the bridge from earth to heaven. Uh, I think I sang that special about twice, is that without a word, God's voice was heard, for the cross said it all. Uh, proving love like no one else could, God took three nails and two pieces of wood, and the cross said it all. That's how the song goes. So anyway, so then Christ, he becomes that, in, so then the Holy Spirit, he's the one delivering the channel. And then the Holy, and then God the Son, he's the one, okay, so I got the message from the Holy Spirit, so then let me talk to the Father here. And the Father, he will answer it as long as it's according to his will. Now I'm going to give you two great promises here, okay? First promise is this, is that a lot of times we pray inaccurately. Let's be honest, we don't pray correctly, correct? Amen. Yeah, we don't pray correctly. So because we don't pray correctly, it's always incorrect. So then God gave a wonderful promise that the Holy Spirit, He can understand what you're really feeling. And He knows truly what you truly need. And then the God the Son, He takes that red marker of your prayer request and then He crosses it out and writes the correct prayer request Amen. and then gives it to the Father where it can meet according to His will. This is what Gene really means, Father. Will you answer it according to your will? And then the Lord will answer it in a mighty way. Because why? Because based on Romans chapter 8, verse 26 uh, through 27, we don't, uh, we don't know how to pray. There are times we don't know how to pray. Now, this gives a, a sad thing too. This is also a sad thing. It's a happy thing for us, but there's also a sad thing too. The sad thing is we should know how we should pray to the Father. We should know how to pray correctly. But because we're so flesh, see, that's the problem. Because we're so locked into this flesh, we don't know how to pray correctly. Now think about this. If you were, if we have the blessed promise of the Holy Spirit correcting our prayers, let me ask you this question. If flesh is the one interfered, then what happens when flesh is crossed out, huh? When flesh is crossed out based on what? The crucified life with Christ, right? So then when you're living according to your crucified life based off of Romans 6, where the flesh is considered dead to you, and then you yield instead to the Holy Spirit, right? If you yield to the Holy Spirit, then what happens? One of the most blessed promises that you learned in beginner's discipleship, you get more filled with the Spirit, don't you? Now, if you're filled so much with the Spirit, let me ask you this. If you're filled so much with the Spirit, you got so much spiritual power flowing out of you. And if you got so much spiritual power flowing out of you, imagine that channel going up to heaven to the Father then. Then what do you think God the Father will do? Because the Holy Spirit is considered the Spirit of the who? Lord. That's Him. That's a part of Him. Now, when you're so much filled with the Spirit, do you think the Father then will be able to answer it bam like that? Have you heard of Great Awakening Revival preachers who are so much filled with the Holy Spirit that when they would just pronounce uh, that, that they would say something, it would happen? There's, um, uh, I, I, so evangelist, uh, so Pastor Kogel, he'll probably have to correct me on how I, on how I deliver this, but he was at a, a meeting, a revival meeting, where he heard this one preacher, uh, he's so much filled with Holy Spirit power and then there was some, uh, I think there was like money stolen, uh, offering stolen within the revival meeting. And that preacher got up, who's known to be a prayer warrior, and he says that, um, I prayed for that person. And he's going to give the money back. And then some of the preachers were saying, look, when he says that, that guy, the money will return. <laughs> it will happen tomorrow. And then guess what? The next day, yeah, they got the money back. How, how did he have it? Because that guy, I mean, uh, was it magic? You know, man, that guy, a lot of people would say that guy is filled so much with the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? That connects with prayer. Filling of the Spirit is all connected to prayer too. 
If you're filled so much with the Spirit, that means when you pray, it's going to answer. Now, do you have that in your life? You ever have that in your life? So then, if you want powerful prayer, a lot of people don't see this. If you want to get powerful prayer in your life, then you need all three persons of the Trinity, see, at work in you. One, be filled with the Spirit. Now, are you filled with the Spirit? Or are you filled so much with flesh? One, you should ask yourself. Two, the Son is interceding on our behalf, right? So because He's interceding on our behalf, we got to know what He thinks is the actual correct prayer. And how do you find the correct one? It's through His words. Look at, uh, if you look at John chapter 1, verse 1, what is He known as? The Word. The word. John 15, what does it say? If Christ remains in you and my word abide in you, ask whatever ye will and it will be given to you. So, if you want the prayer answer, you got to know that book. That's why a lot of people who delved into prayer, what they do before they pray is that they read the Bible first. George Mueller made that a habit where he would read the Bible first and then pray. You might ask why. Because that way, when he gives the language of prayer to the Lord, it would be the language of the Bible to, the, to God. Now think about this. A father who, uh, which, which child would the father favor more? A normal father favor more. A child that the, uh, that the father would favor more is someone who communicates it with him, who's very similar with his personality or his communication, his language, his speech. Now, if you're so much sync with God when you read the Bible and then you give the language like the Father would word the language, what do you think the Father would do when He answers your prayer then? It would take you to another extreme level, wouldn't it? It would take you beyond. So you got to know the book. So here's something that people have to understand is that that's why what, the number one important thing in the Christian life, that way he can get all the other important things right in his life, is doctrine. Granted, your relationship with Jesus should be the most important thing in your life, but you can't get the right relationship if you get wrong, if you get wrong doctrine. First thing that the Bible says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for what's first? Doctrine. So here's the problem with people. Why do you, oh, pastor, you're nitpicky with doctrines. No, I'm not. Then maybe that's why your prayer life is weak. If you want good prayer life, you better get right doctrine. And I don't even care if it's the wackiest, craziest doctrine you've heard about blue-blooded aliens in the Bible. I want to know what my father teaches. Yeah. Amen. Every detail. And if I get that so much in sync in my mind and in my heart, then my prayer life can become tenfold and twentyfold even more powerful. So that's why it's so important to stress so much on right doctrine and Bible-believing pastors should never shy away from that. They should teach it. But instead, they want to get along with their fundamentalist friends. So because of that, they keep it hidden. And then because they keep it hidden, then the prayer life cannot become powerful. So doctrine is obviously not just the deep, crazy doctrines. It should be everything. It should be everything in the Word of God. Whether it be about love or whether it be about the Antichrist coming out as a chimera leopard, etc. The point is what, what God's Word says. It's that simple. It's that simple. So why do you think it's important for you to go to the right church? Because if you go to a wrong church and you pray for hours and then God doesn't answer your prayer, that's a big issue then. Amen. Yeah. That's why it's so important. You have to be a Bible believer, getting all your doctrines right, attending a Bible believing church. There's obviously, obviously, when uh, we're not being nitpicky about every single detail where we fight each other, but see, that's the thing is that Getting along with brethren is a totally different topic and issue compared to your prayer life. Your life, you should believe every right doctrine correctly. Other people, when you do relationship with them, is totally different. It's not the same thing. So those are separate things. So how much do you know that book? Do you read the Bible before you pray? It makes you wonder. It might change your prayer time. Because God might reveal you something from His Word where you could use that in prayer to him. And then ultimately, when you look at Romans chapter 8, verse 27, according to the will of what? 
God. That's the Father. So then, it's ultimately knowing His will. Now, when you're filled so much with the power of the Holy Spirit, 100%, don't give me 90, but 100, and then you go through the word of Christ, 100%, not 90. So you memorize, you study, you believe, you research, you read and read and read the word of God, 100%. And then guess what? Let's say that you seek the Father's will 100%. Do you do that? Do you do this? You know what I do? I mentioned this in our earlier lessons on prayer. How do you get God to answer prayer? When you seek what, his, uh, what, what you seek glorifies Him. When you pray for something that you know glorifies God, that makes Him happy, that will please Him. That will change your prayer. You'd be surprised that even some of the things that you thought were fleshly requests may not actually be a fleshly request when you focus that on what glorifies God. Lord, I need, here's a quick example. Lord, uh, I pray for this vacation that, to give me so that I can get away and then relax. Well, isn't that a fleshly re prayer request? No, if you amend it, if you amend that prayer to, for God's glory, Lord, please give me a vacation because this is your temple and I don't want to wear out your temple and I want to keep using this temple to glorify you, do more things at church, but I can't do that if my energy is all gone. Hey, so you notice right over there that you will know, uh, when you do those kind of prayers seeking God's glory, you'd be quite often according to the will of God when you pray. So seek what glorifies him. What did Moses do? Moses changed God's mind. Didn't you know you can change God's mind? No, but yeah, you can change God's mind. That's how powerful prayer is. You can change God's mind if what? If you seek what glorifies him. And even when God would think, no, I'm going to do this route, if you really seek what glorifies him, you know what truly his will is that you can say to him, Lord, um, wouldn't it be better this way? And then God would say, yeah, so I'll do it that way. And God likes that. God likes it when you know his deep innermost desires and he don't have to do it all for you. Yeah. Uh, that's good. He would like it where you would know his innermost deep desires. Do you see that in relationships? You know, sometimes uh, wives can be mysterious, and then the husband's like, I don't know what you want! And then the wife's like, no, you should know what I want, but they're not actually that clear, you know? <laughs> Why is that? Because uh, the husbands fail to be that intimate, that close, that fully knowledgeable with their wife. And then if you did that, then you'd know what, how to butter up your wife. You know what would make her happy, and you know how to dodge an argument and a fight, okay? And trust me, it can work sometimes. It can work, all right? But the thing is, is see, that's, um, you got to know what is God's innermost desire. And if you do that 100%, look at this. If you get the three in work, what do you think is going to happen to your prayer life then? You know what put all of creation to existence was the Word, His very Word. And if you use that 100%, and then you use uh, all three persons of the Godhead, 100% in power, what do you think, who do you think is going to conquer your prayer life? Who do you think is going to defeat your prayer life? Who do you think is going to overcome your prayer life? Absolutely no one. Why? Because God is in it. Amen, brother. God is in it.